These films are for the eternally youthful at heart. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 teen movies of all time. For this list, we'll be looking at films that best encapsulate the teen experience and have defined generations. We're excluding movies set at college, like Legally Blonde. I object! Number 20. The Fault in Our Stars This adaptation of John Green's novel wasn't the first tearjerker to touch upon teens with terminal illnesses. Yet, few films have tackled this difficult subject matter with more intelligence or depth than The Fault in Our Stars. I believe we have a choice in this world about how to tell sad stories. On the one hand, you can sugarcoat it the way they do in movies and romance novels. That's mainly because the film respects its characters, taking the time to flesh out their fears, desires, and passions. Hazel Grace Lancaster feels all too real, as do her relationships with her parents, support group, and the charismatic Augustus. Oblivion's inevitable, and if that scares you, then I suggest you ignore it. God knows it's what everyone else does. This makes it all the more heartbreaking when tragedy inevitably strikes. The ending might not be the happiest, but it's one that the filmmakers 100% earn. This is a movie that treats its young viewers like adults, pulling no punches and offering no easy solutions, but ultimately leaving them feeling stronger. Are you in pain? No. I'm okay. Number 19. She's the Man This contemporary teen comedy gets its inspiration from Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. In terms of its dialogue, setting, and time period, She's the Man is admittedly far removed from the original play. Remember, inside every girl, there's a boy. That came out wrong. One element of its source material that the film does manage to capture, however, is the farcical fun. A love triangle is one thing, but when Amanda Bynes' Viola decides to pose as her twin brother, she finds herself wrapped up in what's essentially a love hexagon. Do you like cheese? Well, why, yes, I do. My favorite's Gouda. It's so complicated that the audience can't help but laugh at the sheer absurdity of the whole situation, which naturally builds to several funny revelations. All right, so everybody understand? Yeah, I get it. Okay. Wait a minute. If I kissed your brother, where is he? <laughs> He's probably halfway to China by now. He showed his Willis and Doodleberry so present. While the film doesn't take itself too seriously, it still finds room for a girl power message that young ladies can take to heart. Number 18. The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants This might at first sound like another cheesy chick flick. Yet, it's a surprisingly deep adaption of Anne Brashear's novel, carried by four immensely talented actresses. Best friends Lena, Carmen, Bridget, and Tibby may go their separate ways over the summer, but they remain connected through a pair of pants that miraculously fits them all. Call me crazy, but it's scientifically impossible that a pair of pants could fit me. And me. And me. While each girl faces her fair share of typical teen drama, they also confront many heavy issues regarding death, divorce, and virginity. Is it really them you're afraid of? Or is it something else? The more serious moments are balanced out with a lot of heart and humor. It's a coming-of-age story that fits with a wide range of young adults, much like the pants themselves. We can just tell everybody that Carmen's Puerto Rican, and it never occurred to you that she might be built differently. Or that unlike you and your daughter, she has an ass! Number 17, Easy A. So here it is. Part one. Ironically, this teen comedy is considered by many to be a better take on The Scarlet Letter than the 1995 film version with Demi Moore. Cunningly contrived, my dear. <laughs> Easy A brings Nathaniel Hawthorne's literary masterpiece into the modern world, with a clever screenplay and a breakthrough performance from Emma Stone. The shudder-inducing and cliched, however totally false, account of how I lost my virginity to a guy at a community college. As all of Pendergast, Stone plays a 17-year-old virgin who tells one little white lie that snowballs into a big scandal. Jesus tells us to love everyone. I mean, even the whores and the homosexuals, but it's just so hard. Labeled the town tart, Olive decides to have some fun with her new status and discovers something about herself along the way. In addition to being endlessly witty, the film offers an important moral for every teenager. Whether you have sex in high school or not, it's nobody else's business. Also, hugs not drugs, mess with the bull, get the horns, and any other cliches you can come up with. 
Bye, Mr. Griffin. Number 16, Grease. Pretend you don't spoil it. It's not spoiling it, Sandy. It's only making it better. Grease isn't exactly an accurate depiction of the 50s. It's not the most accurate depiction of high school either. But perhaps that's what makes this musical so enduring. Tell me more, tell me more, like the The film is completely wrapped up in its own world, offering its audience a much needed escape. I've just had the best summer of my life and now I have to go away. Of course, that's not to say the film isn't relatable. No matter what era you grew up in, you likely saw a bit of yourself in Danny, Sandy, or one of the other iconic players. These are timeless characters that speak to us even decades later. So, in a strange way, Grease does say something enriching about the teenage experience, all while cementing its legacy with an insanely catchy soundtrack. It's Number 15, 8th Grade where most of the films on this list center on high school, 8th grade reminds us that middle school can be as equally confusing and stressful, if not more so. Okay, so growing up can be a little bit scary and weird, but it's also a really good thing because you get to change things that you might not like about yourself, and that's good because change is a good thing. Between Bo Burnham's direction and Elsie Fisher's lead performance as Kayla, the film couldn't be more authentic in its portrayal of teenage anxiety and disappointment. What was in there? Nothing really, um, just sort of my hopes and dreams. We all went into middle school expecting great things, although many of us look back at the experience as an awkward chapter in life. We can all identify with Kayla's insecurities, but 8th grade is specifically tailored towards iGen, a generation raised on technology. As uncomfortable as the film gets, it also provides a source of comfort for today's youth, assuring them that things get better and that they aren't alone. You're really, you're really smart about stuff. Like, you know a lot of things. Thanks. I was thinking you should maybe, you can maybe have like your own talk show or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Number 14, A Cinderella Story. Despite not exactly being critically well-received upon release, this modern take on the timeless story was a box office success and has gained a cult following over the years. So what is it that sets the film apart from all the other Cinderella stories? The performances, for starters. Hilary Duff and Chad Michael Murray share undeniable chemistry, although it continues to baffle us why Austin can't recognize Sam behind that masquerade mask. The familiar formula is elevated by its scene-stealing supporting performances as well. Jennifer Coolidge is well-suited to play Sam's wicked stepmother. I am very, 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 very upset about this. You don't look upset. Oh, it's the Botox. I can't show emotion for another hour and a half. As Sam's fairy godmother, Regina King spins what could have been a straightforward role into gold. Oh, girl, please, save all that drama for the soap operas. You are going to that dance. <laughs> Go ahead, girlfriend. Throw in some memorable one-liners, and this teenage fairy tale ultimately finds its footing. Never let the fear of striking out keep me from playing the game. Number 13, Heathers. Heathers is the kind of twisted teen movie that only could have been made in the 80s. At the same time, this satire is very different from the decade's other teen romps. We must pray that the other teenagers of Sherwood, Ohio, know the name of that righteous dude who can solve their problems. It's Jesus Christ, and he's in the book. Instead of being hopeful and lighthearted like John Hughes, screenwriter Daniel Waters tapped into the dark side of teenage life and took it to an extreme. For anyone who went to high school with self-absorbed mean girls and arrogant jocks, Heathers is the ultimate revenge fantasy. As over-the-top as the story gets, we'd be lying if we said that the inner troublemaker in us all didn't identify with the film's cynical outlook. People are gonna look at the ashes of Westerberg and say, now there is a school that self-destructed not because society didn't care, but because the school was society. It's pretty deep, huh? Decades later, the film is still relevant, provocative, and above all else, hilarious, giving us some of the genre's most biting one-liners. Veronica, you look like hell. Yeah, I just got back. Number 12, Lady Bird. Greta Gerwig wanted her directorial debut to feel, quote, like a memory, which is the best way to describe Lady Bird. The film takes its audience back to 2002, a time when most of us were adjusting to a post-9-11 world. I wish I could live through something. Aren't you? Nope. 
The only exciting thing about 2002 is that it's a palindrome. For Christine Lady Bird McPherson, though, she's completely wrapped up in her own world. In Lady Bird's eyes, she's one of a kind and wishes to be treated as such. In reality, almost every teenager has been in this character's shoes. Hungry for attention, eager to move out, and convinced that they know everything. None of these things were put away right. They I, aren't nice, I put Christine. My clothes now, away. my name Don't is Lady. Lie Bird. to me. This this uniform. This is going to look like trash on Monday. This isn't right. We can't treat our clothes like this. I don't know what your wealthy friends Why do. Why do you care what I do to my clothes? As confident as Lady Bird is, it only takes a small taste of real-world experience for her to realize that she still has a lot of growing up to do. Did you feel emotional the first time that you drove in Sacramento? I did. Number 11, Superbad. Superbad aims to get a laugh virtually every second, succeeding with almost every one-liner and visual gag. The film propelled Jonah Hill and Michael Sarah to another level of fame, while also making stars out of Emma Stone and the artist formerly known as McLovin. How old are you, McLovin? Old enough. Old enough for what? It's a party. Its story couldn't be more straightforward, as a quest for alcohol sends our underaged protagonists on an increasingly wild night. We get off dancing with my fiance. Superbad isn't driven by plot, however. This film runs purely on humor and, to the surprise of many, heart. We wouldn't be as invested in the comedy if we weren't invested in the characters, and the audience genuinely comes to care about this film's central friendship. As far as gross-out teen movies go, Superbad is more evolved than expected. I love you. It's like, why don't we say that every day? Why can't we say it more often? I just love you. I just want to go to the rooftops and scream, I love my best friend Evan. We should go up on my roof. For sure. Number 10, Moonlight. Most coming-of-age movies focus on a pivotal time in a young person's life. Moonlight, however, follows Chiron Harris through three life chapters that shape who he becomes. But I ain't so. I know, I know. But it don't mean nothing if they don't know. Come on. You want these fools to pick on you every day? We begin in Chiron's youth as he's exposed to a cruel world that will only grow harsher with age. Chiron's teenage years are defined by two moments, one where he experiences true love and another that sends him down a troubled path. It all builds to Chiron's adulthood where he learns to accept himself. While this Best Picture winner isn't strictly a teen movie, its themes of sexual identity, toxic masculinity, and self-love are important for young adults to explore. Who is you, Sharon? I'm me, man. I ain't trying to be nothing else. Oh, okay, so you, you hard now. For that reason, it's a film that every teenager should see, especially those who are struggling to find themselves. Number nine, to all the boys I've loved before. Netflix has built up a substantial library of teen rom-coms, and To All the Boys remains their premier offering. Many of us have sent text messages that we regretted writing, but Laura Jean's circumstances are far more universe-shattering. Over the years, Laura Jean has written several unmailed letters to her crushes. One of those crushes just so happens to be her sister's ex-boyfriend. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Hey! Stop that! Two more laps for you, Cubby! When those declarations of love are sent out, Lara Jean winds up in a fake romance that might just be the real deal. How about this? You can put your hand in my back pocket. Hand in your back pocket? Mm -hmm. What the hell is that? 16 candles. It's the opening image. It's a couple's thing. The film is simple yet sweet with enough zippy dialogue to keep the plot afloat. It also effectively touches upon issues such as cyberbullying and refreshingly brings together a diverse cast without calling attention to itself. I mean, I can tell by the way he looks at you. Okay, how does he look at me? Not like your sexy little Rubik's Cube. He can't really <laughs> figure you out, but you know, he's having a lot of fun trying. Number eight. 10 Things I Hate About You. So tell me about this dance, was it hopping? Yet another modern movie that borrows from a classic, 10 Things I Hate About You is the high school equivalent of William Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew. In this interpretation, the quote unquote shrew is Kat, a teenage girl with no interest in dating. Old rule out, new rule, Bianca can date. 
when she does. When she inadvertently gets entangled in her little sister's love life, though, Cat winds up falling for bad boy Patrick. Despite its familiar tropes, this romantic comedy exceeded expectations, thanks to its quotable lines, The shit hath hit it, the fan. Yes. Infectious soundtrack, and plenty of sincere moments. I hate it when you make me laugh. It also helped jumpstart the careers of several cast members, including Julia Stiles, Joseph Gordon Levitt, and the late Heath Ledger. It's not every day you find a girl who'll flash someone to get you out of detention. Number 7. Love Simon. In teen movies of the past, gay characters have typically been either relegated to side roles or absent altogether. Love, Simon is the film that the LGBTQ community had been waiting for, shining the spotlight on a closeted teen struggling to come out. He told me that if I didn't help him get with Abby, he'd out me. And I... That's why I had to keep you guys apart. So you made up a bunch of lies. The film avoids the tired stereotypes we're used to seeing, delivering a believable portrayal of what it's like to be a gay high schooler in the 21st century. The comedy drama also avoids having a straight-up villain, with even the more antagonistic characters possessing redeeming qualities. Simon's internal struggle is where the real conflict lies as he deals with insecurity, fear, and feelings he can only express online. You get to exhale now, Simon. You get to be more you than you have been in... in a very long time. It all builds to a heartwarming resolution with plenty of laughs along the way. Can I sit there? I was kind of waiting for somebody. Yeah, I know. Number 6. Ferris Bueller's Day Off John Hughes knew how to strike the perfect balance between realism and fantasy. Sitting in class, waiting for the bell to ring, we've all thought about faking sick and having the most epic day ever. How could I possibly be expected to handle school on a day like this? Ferris Bueller's Day Off makes that daydream a reality, doing so with charm, humor, and creativity, not to mention an unforgettable soundtrack. It's impossible to lay eyes on a Ferrari without getting the oh yeah song stuck in your head. While the shenanigans Ferris and his friends get into aren't always realistic, the characters, their dynamics, and their development certainly are. Ferris's fourth wall breaks, to Ben Stein's infamous Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Few teen comedies remain this quotable even decades later. Days come and go, this one will last forever. Number 5. The Perks of Being a Wallflower Tomorrow is my first day of high school ever. When you're a freshman in high school, it's easy to feel like you don't belong anywhere. You're never alone, however, as there's always somebody else blending into the crowd with you. Charlie Kelmeckis learns this valuable lesson in The Perks of Being a Wallflower, a smart, funny, and powerful adaptation of Stephen Shabosky's novel. I would never do drugs. Never. As he befriends senior Sam and Patrick, Charlie sees that everyone has a right to the high school experience, be they popular or below average. Look. My name is Patrick. Either you call me Patrick or you call me nothing. He also finds that every teen has their inner demons, be it pertaining to bigotry, mental illness, or common insecurities. No matter what you're going through, it's a lot easier with a friend in your corner. Teacher of the night. Number 4. Clueless I actually have a way normal life for a teenage girl. If you grew up in the 90s, chances are you wanted to be Cher Horowitz. Rich, beautiful, and fashionable, this character epitomizes everything the teenage dream stands for. At the same time, Cher still manages to be an identifiable protagonist. She's spoiled, but never condescending or mean-spirited. Whatever. She's fabulous, but isn't without her flaws. She's clueless, but much smarter than she appears. The same can be said about the film itself, which molds the Valley Girl stereotype into a three-dimensional individual. Clueless also notably derives inspiration from Jane Austen's Emma. Much like how Austen understood the women of her era, writer-director Amy Heckerling gets the mentality of teenage girls down to a T. Get down on the ground, face down. Come on. Oh no. You don't understand, this is an alia. Number 3. The Edge of Seventeen Portraying teen angst in movies can be tricky. 
If you make a character too angsty, they can come off as unlikable. Thanks to Kelly Freeman Craig's witty screenplay and Haley Steinfeld's lovable performance, The Edge of Seventeen gives us an angsty teen who we can all sympathize with. Just don't be so weird. God, why are you so awkward? God, just have a good time. Just relax. Just relax. Have a good time. Outside of angst, what the movie really gets down is the awkward side of being a teenager. This is a film that understands what it's like to feel uncomfortable in your own skin, not to mention everywhere else. While Steinfeld's Nadine is a magnet for cringe-worthy moments, Craig's script treats the character with dignity and empathy. Everyone just wants to feel important in life. Thing is, no matter how important they are, there's always gonna be someone more important. People get so uptight about that. Oh no, they're better than me. It's like, God, they don't realize important doesn't matter. Nadine may not be perfect, but that's easy to forgive because we've all been in her sneakers before. Number two, The Breakfast Club. What we did was wrong. But we think you're crazy to make us write an essay telling you who we think we are. At a time when most movies didn't take the world of high school very seriously, writer and director John Hughes showed everyone that teenagers are people too. He defined a generation with 16 candles, pretty in pink, and especially The Breakfast Club. Although it hit the scene in the mid-80s, this coming-of-age tale easily could have come out today. High school is still divided into cliques, from the brains, to the athletes, to the basket cases, to the princesses, to the criminals. When you break down every teenager to their core, however, they all have a great deal in common. Oh my god, are we gonna be like our parents? Our five leads learn this through an eye-opening Saturday in detention, changing both them and the audience forever. Sincerely yours, The Breakfast Club. Don't, 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 don't. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Call Me By Your Name, a coming-of-age romance, and so much more. I know nothing, Oliver. Well, you seem to know more than anybody else around here. Well, if you only knew how little I know about the things that matter. What things that matter? Book smart. As smart as it is hilarious. Why would you do theater when you could do debate? Because some of us enjoy working with others. And some of us know how to win. Nobody's winning in that outfit. Sit down, y'all. We got work to do. Bring it on. A cheerleader comedy with brains. I'm sexy. Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. Dying is hard and so is comedy. This film effortlessly balances both. I really just wanted to see how you was doing. Thanks. Yeah, chemotherapy. It really sucks. Greg, what the hell, bro? Don't say it suck, dumbass. That's kind of suck. Yeah, but I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. Juno, the definitive teen pregnancy movie. No, there it is. Little pink plus sign is so unholy. That ain't no etch sketch This is one doodle that can't be undid, Holmes Gillett. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Mean Girls. While it was far from the first movie about high school, this comedy set a new standard for the genre with unforgettable dialogue, biting satire, and characters that felt all too real. Nice wig, Janice. What's it made of? Your mom's chest hair. Now it seems like almost every teen movie wants to be the next Mean Girls. While many are just pale imitations, others have come fairly close to capturing the humor, depth, and wit that put Mean Girls on the map. Don't have sex, because you will get pregnant and die. In that sense, you could argue that it ushered in a new golden age of teen movies. With that said, nothing has been able to top Mark Waters' keen eye for direction, Tina Fey's brilliant screenplay, or the ensemble's dead-on portrayals. To this date, it remains Queen Bee. I'm kind of psychic. I have a bit sense. What do you mean? It's like I have ESPN or something. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.